Why, hello there. Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools on today's episode. If you want to see how we completely transform this space from this to to this, we'll keep on watching. Let's get started. For this project, it all starts with the backyard and the placement of this flagstone fire pit area. Luckily for me, someone removed all of the grass, now I just need to get to the soil. This is going to be a round patio area, and the easiest way for me to determine exactly where center is, is just to take a tape measure and place a stake somewhere close to where center is. I then slide on a string line to the stake, and then with some marking spray paint, I'm easily able to maneuver around the stake with a surprisingly good circle. Just remember that this circle doesn't have to be perfect at this point, it just gives us a general idea where we have to excavate to. Luckily for us, this patio is dead center in some of the best soil I've ever seen, and therefore we're going to be repurposing this soil in these large planter boxes adjacent to the house, which makes the excavation portion even easier on this project. The one thing to keep in mind as you're excavating is your excavation depth, and there are three things we have to account for, crushed rock, sand, and the actual stone itself. The stone is approximately two inches thick, the sand has to be one inch thick, and we should have approximately four inches of crushed rock below. That means in a perfect world, we have an excavation area of at least seven inches deep, and as you can see with the laser level, because it's propped up onto the grass approximately three and a half inches, we're right on mark, or at least close to. Before I get any further, I just have to say a huge and special thank you to the sponsor of this week's video, Georgia Boot. It rained all day long in this project, and I took my boots off at the end of the day, and my feet were bone dry. I'm wearing two of their boots in this video that have the 100% waterproof guarantee, which I really wish my iPhone had because I had to get a new one after this day. And if you want to check them out for yourself and get 20% off, make sure you use the promo code BYOT at checkout. The link is in the description box below. However, rain or shine, this job still needs to be done, so I picked up my rock and sand at my local bulk material yard, and as a quick calculation, I needed one yard of crushed rock for a 10-foot diameter that also needed to be four inches thick. I wheelbarrowed a large amount of it into my backyard and placed it directly into my excavation hole. Then I took a hard rake and just started raking and smoothing it down as much as possible. The next day I was lucky enough to get some sunshine and therefore it made it a lot easier to get this job done in filmed since not all my cameras are waterproof. I double checked the elevation of our rock to make sure we had the appropriate amount of rock in place and then took a 2x4 and used that as a screed. Now an 8 foot 2x4 does an amazing job at making sure we have a nice flat plane of rock over the entire space. That doesn't have to be perfectly level at this point, but we do want to make sure that we have an even amount of rock and then go back and check to make sure we have proper slope. The rule of thumb is to have an eighth of an inch of slope for every foot, and because we have 10 feet, that means we have one and a quarter inches to account for for slope, and because we're close to seven and three quarters inch on the high side and nine inches on the low side, we have proper slope. Now let's bring in the plate compactor, and if you've never used one of these before, I assure you they're actually very simple to use, they're just on the heavier side, and this is the light version, this is the narrow plate compactor, and you do want to get one of these, especially on a patio of this size, because you want one that can maneuver in very tight knit spaces like this. Plus, you can rent these for under $100 a day, and it is worth your weight in gold because you need to make sure you have a substrate that is extremely firm so your flagstones or any other type of stone that you use doesn't move on you later down the road. The crushed rock that we're compacting here is called out as 5 8 crushed minus, and that's because there is small aggregate in this crushed rock, which makes it perfect for compacting. At your local bulk material yard, they might call it something different, but you do want to make sure that whatever you do use can be used as a compacted subbase. After I go over the area four or five times with the compactor, I then take my screed and a large level and make sure that whatever I am compacting is actually level. 
This is actually quite easy to do and small adjustments can easily be made. Just make sure that once you do make those adjustments, you go back over it one more time with a plate compactor. In order to get a good perimeter around this entire area for grass, I want a good proper edging, which is why I'm using this Landscape Edger by Spring Garden. Now it's a really nice high quality edger that we have to actually pound into the ground. They come with some stakes, but it's a really easy installation as well as gives us a nice determining layer for a nice large circle that we have. So let's get installed. Before we start applying our edging, I do wanna make sure that we have a proper circle. Now again, this doesn't have to be absolutely dead nuts perfect, but I want to be as close as possible, and therefore with a tape measure, a stake, and a hammer, I'm easily able to determine the dead nut center of our circle, and then take a string line and marking spray paint as we did before to make a perfect circle. And as you can see, that is quite a nice circle off of just a stake and a string line. With a small gardening shovel, I start excavating and removing any of the rock where our marking paint has been applied. I don't get rid of this rock because it's going to be used as backfill, but you do need to loosen the soil in the rock first before you start applying your edging. I bust open our edging and the stakes that come with the kit and start placing it into the groove where I just made. All you need to do to tamp down this edging is to just take a stake at the very end and hammer it down in place. The nice thing is about the fact that we're making a circular patio is the fact that this edging was already pre-rolled and therefore it already wants to curve around, which makes a perfect circle, at least a very close perfect circle. Now, if you wanted to do more of a straight run, I probably would lay it flat in the hot sun just to make sure that it straightens out a bit versus it wanting to curve on you. But in this application, it was perfect because we were already applying it to a circular area. Now, this edging does have plenty of amazing features between the recycled plastic due to the flexibility of the design, as well as it will never crack, peel, or fade. It also has a built-in green line depth indicator and a really nice natural wood print on both sides. After I had our landscape edging fully installed, I recompacted the crushed rock with the hand tamper and then installed a layer of weed barrier. Now you do want a weed barrier, one, because you don't want any weeds to come through here, and two, we're gonna be applying sand on top of the surface. And I don't wanna mix the sand with our compacted rock. This weed barrier is more of a fabric barrier, which actually is great because it's perfect for drainage. And since you saw the fact that we have a lot of moisture in this area, we do wanna make sure we have plenty of drainage for this patio. In order to get a nice consistent level of sand, I bring in some electrical conduit and then cut them to the appropriate length. Once cut, I place them into the circle and then position them approximately four feet away from each other. I did want a bit more sand on the high side of our patio, which was easy enough to accomplish with a bit of crushed rock. I did want to double check and make sure we had proper levelness between the two conduits, but I also wanted to make sure we had a downward angle headed down the conduit, which means that we have proper slope for our patio. But now it's time for our sand. Now this is not a nice sand that you'd find at a beach. This is a very coarse sand, which is perfect for a patio like this. I brought it into the backyard and the smallest amount I could get was a half yard, which was way more than I needed on this project. So just keep that in mind on your project if you have something similar like this. As I filled one side up with sand, I quickly grabbed my level and started leveling out the sand as needed that rests onto the conduit. And that's why this conduit is so nice to have because we're able to drag our screed, or in this case, our level across both conduits and get a perfect level of sand all the way across even a rounded surface like this. And this is also the reason why I highly suggest using a metal rigid conduit versus some type of PVC pipe because a PVC plastic pipe is going to bend where a metal conduit should not bend. This is something that we're just dragging across the surface and getting a perfectly smooth surface as we make our way down the patio area. 
As I get to the very end, a large level doesn't work in this case, which is why I just grab a trowel and trowel the sand as nicely as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should look somewhat smooth and even in this space. I then completely remove the conduit which leaves a small cavernous crevasse on both sides which can easily be filled with a sprinkling of sand and some trowel work. But now that we have that taken care of, it's now finally time for our stone. And this stone is actually from Costco of all places. This is a large scale order of Costco flagstone that comes in a pallet and approximately 90 to 100 square feet. As I place our first large stone into the sand, I quickly realize that a soft rubber mallet is not gonna do too much in this circumstance. So I decide to go ahead and just continuously place all of our stone, position them accordingly as they fit together, and then figure out the setting after everything else is placed. Of course, with a large order of flagstone, there's gonna be some unique shapes. And in order to make sure things fit appropriately, you may need to cut a few sections off. Instead of taking a blade and a grinder to this, I highly suggest taking a masonry chisel with a large mallet hammer and chiseling off unneeded sections in that case. Now this is never gonna give you a nice crisp line, but guess what? You don't need a nice crisp line because this is flagstone and the weathered natural unique shapes of the flagstone is perfect for this installation and exactly what we're looking for. Just remember that once it does break, you do wanna go over that edge with your hammer and just smooth it out a bit because it can be a bit more of a sharp, jagged edge if you don't dull it down first before applying it to your patio. Now, if you're someone that loves puzzles, then this will be the perfect project for you because it can be very difficult to try and find pieces that fit perfectly aligned with each other. It will take a bit of work to make sure you have the perfect piece for that space. And if you don't, it's okay because you can always move things around slightly here and there to make sure things fit properly. I do suggest having a tape measure on hand to determine what pieces are actually viable to use because you don't wanna lift a large heavy piece and find out all of a sudden, oh, it doesn't fit and that's no good because then you have to go find a new piece or try and move other pieces around it so it can fit properly. Plus, you don't have an infinite amount of stone to choose from. We do have plenty of stone, but 100 square feet for a patio that needs 80 square feet is plenty, but it doesn't give you a lot of options to choose from if you're stuck at the very end and you're wondering, oh, where does the last piece need to go? And remember, it's okay to move backwards. If one piece doesn't fit properly with another piece, you can always take that piece out and find a better piece that's more cohesive for the space. One thing to also keep in mind, especially if you're purchasing this flagstone from Costco, is the fact that these pieces are one inch to two inches thick. Therefore, some of these pieces are not on the same plane as all the others. And that's where the plate compactor comes in very nicely because we still have that on hand and we're gonna use it to go over this entire surface numerous times. And this is actually very beneficial because this sets all the stone not only permanently within the sand, but it also allows the majority of these stones to be on the same elevation as the rest. I had to go back and forth over and over again with this plate compactor and probably did this entire area at least 10 times to make sure we have the same elevation everywhere. And that was difficult, especially with the fact that these flagstones are different thicknesses. But that's also why it's so important to have a plate compactor on hand because it made quick work of this leveling scenario, which would have taken hours to do if we didn't have it. Now there were a couple small pieces that were slightly buried to the plate compactor, which is why I added some sand underneath it, which brought it up to true level with everything else. I watered everything down heavily to solidify everything and to figure out if there was any sand voids underneath the rock. Once that was taken care of, I added more sand to the surface and then used a broom to sweep it out evenly. I'm mainly trying to fill all the cracks and crevices between the flagstone, and this doesn't have to be perfect because flagstone is an imperfect stone, but it really does finish off the flagstone nicely if you're able to fill those cracks and crevices evenly. I washed the entire patio off as I did previously, but of course with this wash off, we don't have any large voids within the cracks. 
Now that we have our flagstone patio taken care of, it's now time to do a bit of cleanup. Of course, we have to go around the perimeter to remove any of the excess sand or rock, which we don't want around because it's not suitable for grass growing and we want a nice luscious grass around this entire patio. Luckily for us, we did save a few large sections of grass when we removed it from the yard and therefore we're able to easily patch these in place as needed around our patio. But with that, all we have to do is a bit of extra cleanup and guess what? We are done! absolutely love how this entire project turned out. This stone is absolutely beautiful, it's unique, it's rustic, it really works within the space, and there's so much variance within a flagstone that you're never going to get a perfectly flat surface, but guess what? It really does look beautiful, and I know how much hard work went into trying to put together this large puzzle. Now we just need a bit of dry weather here in the Pacific Northwest so we can have a nice little bonfire, and that's what I call one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah. <laughs>